You really need to adjust your attitude. For questions or complaints, please contact the manufacturer. I like to add a little humor whenever I can. Before we get into the video clips, there are a few things I want to say. This video is long, but in order to support my premise, I had to provide many video clips. I live in Illinois, and in the 1980s, the men here were able to get rights regarding child custody. But millions of men work nationwide have no rights regarding child custody. I think and believe that it would be best for children if custody of the child automatically went to the man and not the woman. This video is going to provide support for, for such a statement. Please like and share this video. I'm trying to get men talking about automatically receiving custody of the child. I hope that this video will provide weapons and ammunition against people who disagree. I know that many people have heard the data that says children raised in a single mother household have a greater chance of going to prison, drug addiction, promiscuity, and suicide. My issue with this data is that it does not provide you the whole story. People read data and come to a conclusion that the data, that the data did not provide. This is why many ignored this conclusion and why our society cannot move forward. My undergraduate degree is in statistics and as I got my master's in business, I worked some data analysis jobs. The problem with people's interpretation of this data is that it leaves out a major point a very important point. This gives people the ability to ignore the data. Yes, the majority of children who have difficulty as adults do come from single mother households, but some of them also come from two parent households. Children raised in a single father household do not develop these difficulties as adults. I will spare you the complete analysis, but this indicates that the cause is not being a single mother, but being a single mother is a symptom of the cause. The cause is that these women are sick and disgusting people, lazy, spoiled children in adult bodies. This causes them to be abusive and neglectful. And because they are abusive and neglectful is why no man can be with them, and therefore is why they are single mothers. So being a single mother is not the cause of children having difficulty when they become an adult, but it is a symptom of women who are selfish, lazy, and spoiled. A child in an adult body. Throughout this video, I will do my best to support what I have just said through various video clips. Children who come from abusive and neglectful homes have problems as adults. Children who come from a two-parent household can also be from an abusive and neglectful home. And many of these girls get other girls to act the same way as young adults. I will hypothesize that this is one of the reasons why feminism was able to spread so easily. And because of this, the way our society is structured, plus the fact that single mothers can provide the worst outcomes for children as they become adults, custody of the child should automatic, automatically go to the father and not the mother. These next two video clips indicates why men make great single fathers and why many women do not make good single mothers. 98% of men that are in prison were raised by a single mother. 40% of women today that have a baby are having it as a single mother. 10 times more women than men end up killing their children. When a father raises a kid by himself, the kid will be 95% better than being raised by a single mother. And he will be even better being raised by a father than by two parents together. The girl will be less promiscuous, she's going to be more traditional, she'll be a better daughter. The son will most likely not be a convict, he's not going to get into problems, he's actually going to have someone to answer to because you have a dad. And imagine that single dad also has to work, has to provide, has to protect, has to raise them. Like you're the selfish gender, get there faster. You guys are the selfish gender. We see a poor woman covered in dust. And but hold on. I'll save you. You guys see a poor homeless guy covered in dust? You walk by as he's overdosing on fentanyl, you disgusting animal. <laughs> Male disposability has been around since the dawn of time. <laughs> uh, and it's based on, on one uh, very, very straightforward dynamic. Uh, when it comes to the well-being of others, 
they come first, men come last. This is this is just the way it, it has always been. Uh, seats in lifeboats, uh, <laughs> being rescued from burning buildings, uh, who gets to eat? Um, really, society places men dead last every time, and society expects men to place themselves dead last every time. Humans have always had a dynamic of women and children first, and that has not changed at all. Back when we were still living in caves, that attitude was necessary for human survival. Nature's a really harsh mistress, especially when you think of all the animals that never ever get to die of old age. Uh, things were a lot different for humans through most of our history on this planet than they are now. Life was dangerous, human settlements were small, isolated from each other, and one big disaster that took out a lot of women pretty much meant the end of the entire shebang for that group of people. So really, the level of importance that a human settlement placed on the well-being of women and children uh, reflected almost always how successful that settlement was. And that can be expanded to encompass entire societies. Uh, when it comes to producing babies, every woman counts. Whereas, biologically, one very happy man could probably do the work of hundreds in that regard. So, the level of instinctive importance we humans place on the safety and provision of women and their children it's one of the main reasons why we've been able to be so successful that we've come to really dominate this planet. Even today, in 2011, uh, we fully expect that if it comes down to a, a man and a woman in a burning building and you can only save one, the expectation is that you choose the woman every single time. So honestly, whose humanity are we placing above whose here? That's the equation. One life more valuable than another, and the woman wins every time. So honestly, is there any argument anywhere that women's humanity has always been held in higher regard by society than men's? To be important to society, a woman merely has to be. A man has to do in order for his life to have any meaning to anyone other than himself. And one of the most useful things a man can do even now in the eyes of society is to put women and children before himself. Studies have shown that even though baby boys tend to cry and fuss more than baby girls, uh, parents are quicker to attend to or console a baby girl than they are a baby boy. And just think about what even these very first interactions and experiences, these differences in how we nurture our babies, depending on what gender they are, what this teaches them. Uh, what do we teach baby girls when we attend to their crying so quickly? Uh, we teach them to ask for help because their needs are important. Uh, we teach them to let us know when they're afraid or in pain because it's important for us to know when they're sick or in danger or hurt uh, so we can do something about it. We teach them that when they're sad or lonely uh, to summon comfort and comfort will be there. We teach them that they're important. Uh, their needs and well-being, both emotional and physical, are important just because. And what are we teaching baby boys when we leave them to cry? We teach them there's not much point in seeking help, because it will be grudgingly given, if at all. Uh, we teach them that they should become self-contained in their ability to deal with uh, emotions like fear, uh, helplessness, loneliness, sadness, pain, distress. We teach them stoicism. We teach them to suck it up. Uh, we teach them that their fear and their pain are things that are best ignored. We teach them that their emotional and physical well-being are just not as important as other things. And baby girls, by attending to her crying so quickly, by letting her know she's inherently important to us, we're preparing her for the day she has to think of her own safety first, even if it means the man she loves is left standing alone with a rifle in front of a cabin. We're preparing her to take that seat in the lifeboat, we're training her to not allow guilt or empathy or acknowledgement of a man's humanity or any sense that he might just maybe deserve it more to convince her to give her seat to him. Because for millennia, the human species absolutely depended on her feeling 100% entitled to that seat. Feminism has done nothing but exploit this dynamic of the expectation on men to put everybody else before themselves, especially women women's safety and support, women's well-being, and women's emotional needs always come first. 
We made our way as humans through a really harsh history and we became the dominant force on this planet and one of the reasons we were so successful is because we have consistently put women's basic needs first, their need for safety, support and provision. It was in humanity's best interest for women to be essentially self-interested and for men to be essentially self-sacrificing. Okay, so in November I decided I no longer wanted to be a responsible parent and I gave up my kids. I was just tired of being responsible and caring for them. I felt like I was too young and I wanted to go out there and experience life and I started dating someone else so it just didn't fit with my new lifestyle. And I didn't have anything to worry about because the other parent is a very responsible parent. But now I'm here because now I'm in child support and to top it off I'm really pissed off that I took care of them all the way up to November and I couldn't claim them on my taxes because the other parent had already claimed them. All I can say is what has this world come to man? This woman, this mother is mad that she has to pay child support because she abandoned her kids because they didn't fit her lifestyle. Like, could you imagine being so entitled, so evil to just think that you can just throw away your kids and think that, you know, the club lifestyle or this, you know, lavish lifestyle is better than the greatest thing on earth, which is a family. And could you imagine the toll that this has on her children? They'll be at their dad's house asking where their mom is and then their dad be like, well, you know, you didn't fit her lifestyle. She wanted to go explore and, you know, have this good time and you were sort of hindering that. And just imagine how you would feel if you were this woman's kid and you saw this when you were older. And she cared more about claiming her kids on her taxes so she could get money than her actual kids themselves. This video honestly just made me sick to my stomach how people could just be this selfish. If you don't want kids, then don't have kids. It's that simple. But if you have kids, you need to treat them with care, treat them with love, and you just can't throw them away whenever you decide because, oh, you want to be a club girl now. She said our society is structured where men have to be self-sacrificing and provide value to the world. Therefore, many men are raised from birth not to be selfish, not to be lazy, and not to be spoiled. Since most parents will teach their children their inherent values, men teach their children these traits. This results in children becoming adults without developing a drug addiction, going to prison, or engaging in promiscuity. However, Many women are taught from birth to always ask for help and help will come and think about their own self-interest first. The single mothers produce adults who are selfish, lazy, and spoiled. And when these children, who are now adults, have children, their parenting method comes from a place of selfishness. This results in abuse or neglectful, neglectfulness. Most children who grew up in an abusive household have problems when they become adults. Back in 1995, the United States only had about one million people in prison. Now, it is over two million people. It seems like as the number of single mothers have increased, our prison population have also increased. I do not have this data, so I conducted no statistical analysis. This is just my opinion. Many people who come from abusive homes do not go to prison or develop a drug addiction. However, this next video clip indicates that, like a disease, they can spread their psychological and emotional issues to others, and therefore helping to increase the number of single mothers, thus teaching another generation to first look after their own self-interest. This translates into children becoming adults who cannot take accountability and being selfish adults. And so you see the raw, ugly truth. You see the real reason why women encourage each other to go out partying, to drink a lot, to hook up with random guys. 
It's not because they care about their friends and they want the best for them. It's because they're looking for allies to be complicit in their numbing escapist strategy. One woman by herself drinking alcohol, sleeping with random guys, it's obvious that she's a sad, broken person. Numbing herself to escape her problems when she's by herself, there's no way that she could possibly deny that that's her reality. But something magical happens when five women all get together and drink alcohol, go out partying and start hooking up with random guys. Suddenly now, it's not an obvious cry for help, it's fun. It's a party. We're young. This is no big deal. Don't look too deeply into it. Look, all my friends are doing it. Gentlemen, I have seen this many times in my Hey Hero request. If your girlfriend has female friends who are doing this numbing escapist partying strategy, you need to be very careful about her influence on your girlfriend. She will lie saying that she's having such a good time that it feels so good for her to not be tied down to a man. She's only saying this because she cares about your girlfriend. She just wants her to let loose, have some fun. Get her free from her controlling boyfriend who keeps her at home. She's motivated by a sisterly love and care. Wrong. She is motivated by selfishness and she's using your girlfriend as a prop. She wants to make her complicit in her numbing strategy just so she doesn't have to face her own internal demons. A true friend does not try and undermine the happiness of her friends, sabotaging a functional relationship simply so she has somebody to go and party with. Women supporting other women does not look like isolating women from the men in their lives. True support is actively encouraging your girlfriends to invest in their relationship with men because even though this is not politically correct to say, it is in women women's best interests to get married to a good man. I'm going to be aggressive because nobody wants to hear this because what you want me to say today is actually being a single mother is totally possible. It actually isn't. It was never meant to happen for the human race, number one. Number two, single biggest determiner of whether a mother is a good mother, what do you think it is? This is going to blow your mind when I tell you the answer. Whether they have a supportive partner. The major argument for good dads is actually, can the dad be there for the mom? Because it's like a, a direct chain is what we see. What you see is that if you've got a, a father figure, basically, who's supportive to the mother, the mother's energy goes towards the children. But the second that she doesn't have that supportive energy, she collapses, is what happens. And then the kids get starved. And we're not actually supposed to be living in a single family household, so it's supposed to be a lot more support towards mom than just dad but I'm going with standard societal structure. You are a victim of a society that was never meant to work this way. One thing I just absolutely hate about being a mom is how like your children will like sometimes purposely poke at you because like I really do try my best to like keep my composure and not take my anger out on my kids and not use them as my own personal punching bags because they're the one, they're in my space. Like I really, you know, my daughter, she's 11 and sometimes she just poke at me and poke at me. And my thing is, I'm like, you don't know what I'm battling emotionally. You don't know what I'm battling mentally. And you keep playing with me, bro. And I don't want to hurt you. Please stop. And then I just like will shut down and just like give her the silent treatment. Cause I don't be having nothing nice to say and I don't want to hurt her with my words. But I just think that that's up for kids when they do that. Like, why do you do that? My mama had me when she was 15. She lived in a small town in Michigan. She met my dad, they got together. Uh, my mom at the time was fast and had a very traumatic upbringing at which I offer a lot, her a lot of grace for how I was raised. My dad was not much older than her. He lived in the city. When she got pregnant with me, parents put her out. She moved from small town to the city to be with my dad. By the time I was two, they were married and divorced. A lot of fucked up shit ensued uh, involving my father. A lot of shit that fucked me up, fucked my siblings up. Um, Nevertheless, he was always in the picture somewhere. So fast forward to a couple months before my 16th birthday. My dad went on this campaign with me specifically. I'm not your father. I want a paternity test. I'm not your father. And these are things he's saying to me, not to my mom, to me. He would call me. Uh, he had said these things in the past out of spite 
to me or my mom at different points, but there was never any question to me that he wasn't my father, right? I, I, I would then in turn speak to my mom and she like, that's your dad. Uh, he was my boyfriend, that's your dad, right? Like, that's who I was with, that's your dad. He hounded me so much that it got to a point where, as always, I just wanted to appease him. So I talked to my mom and she said, I'm gonna leave the decision to you. If you wanna let that man have a paternity test, then let that man have a paternity test, but I'm gonna leave it to you. Uh, finally, I agree. So two weeks before m my birthday, we go to the paternity testing place. We pull up, me and my mom, uh, my little brother in the back seat, we pull up and uh, my dad is walking out. So his appointment must have been right before ours. Uh, and as he's walking out, I get out the car and I walked up to him and say, and said, hi dad, and went to go hug him and he pushed me off of him. I was really confused and I was really hurt. Uh, like, why would you be mad at me? Why would you be mad at me? Simple as that. Uh, so I go into the paternity test, uh, the place where they're doing the, the mouth swabs. I get my swab, crying the entire time. I'm heartbroken. I come out, him and my mom are arguing in the parking lot about his behavior. Fast forward to April 24th, which just so happens to be his birthday. Mine is the 25th, his is the 24th. He calls me on his birthday. Uh, we're not home, he leaves a voicemail. I get home, I hit the voicemail button on the mail, uh, uh, what is that fucking thing even called? A voicemail box, I don't know. So we hit the button on answer machine, God, no! Oh! And this man is like, uh, wait till you see this, wait till you see this, wait till you see this, uh, yeah, I got them results in the mail, wait till you see this. I'm confused. How he's saying it doesn't lend to an answer one way or the other, so I call him. Dad, wait till you see this. Yeah, I got them results. And I said, okay, what do the results say? I'm not telling you what the results say, at which point I break down. I'm like, why would you not tell me? I'm crying. My mom is yelling in the background, but that next morning is my birthday. It's my 16th birthday. I had decided that morning that I'm gonna have a good day. Damn, that was mature of me. I picked up my outfit. I wore heels to school. Little kid in heels, my mama let me wear. My mom says, walk home on your lunch, I'm gonna take you out. My lunch break, I leave school, I walk home, I walk in the back door. I hear my mom like walking in and out of her room getting ready. I look cute, she's getting dressed up. She says, go grab the mail, get my keys, and then we can go. I go grab the mail, I bring the mail in the house, I set it on the counter. I can't find her keys. So she comes to the kitchen to help me look for her keys and she grabs the stack of mail. She starts shuffling through it and she stops and she looks at me and she looks back at the paper. In this moment, I'm not registering anything, but I know that she was contemplating whether to open it right then or not. Is this the appropriate time for me to open this? But she opens it, which point she looked, she looked directly at me, paused for a minute and I could see the tears welling up in her eyes and then she collapsed. She dropped down on the ground and just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not putting two and two together. This man that told me you gonna get the results, I, it's my birthday. I'm not putting two and two together. I'm not realizing that that's what that is until she says, he was my boyfriend. So the paper is over here on the floor at this point. I'm holding her and I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I grab the paper. It takes me a minute to decipher what the paper says, but I realize that it says he's not my dad. Now the hard part for me in this is that my main concern then, and even now, is always her, her emotional stability. So as I'm reading this paper, telling me, basically that all of the traumatic things that both of us have gone through in life were unnecessary all i can do is console her i have watched many television course shows where it is revealed that the man is not the father and a woman breaks down and cries yet everyone is trying to comfort to soothe and console her in this video clip the mother lied for over 16 years and it is the daughter who should be upset and needs comfort Yet, the mother is so selfish and spoiled that she has trained her daughter to always care about her mother's feelings first. And this mother came from a two-parent household. 
From the previous video clips, men are raised to be self-sacrificing, and women are raised to be to think about their own self-interest first. This can create women who have different levels or degrees of selfishness. This is why men have no difficulty being a single parent, and why some women have a great difficulty being a single mother, and therefore producing children, children who have problems as adults. Every time Kevin Samuels told a woman she should give the child to the father, her answer was always in terms of what she wanted and not what might be best for the child. The women in these next video clips are sick and disgusting. You have to ask, how can a person be so evil? In one of these video clips, the woman is trying to justify her behavior towards her, her children. She said that she almost lost her life while giving birth, yet she had five kids. She said that no one taught her how to be a parent but her mother did not beat her growing up. Plus, she could see or ask other parents how they were raising their children. She described how she beat her kids and then hid the marks. Thus, she knew what she was doing was wrong even when she was doing it, yet she kept doing it. The only thing that stopped her was she beat her daughter so severely that she could not hide those scars. She was probably afraid that someone would ask her sons where their sister was, and the kids would tell them that their mother beat her so severely that she could not come to school. But the truly sick part is that she still expects her children to think of her as a caring, loving parent. You do not hear about single fathers acting this way. You only hear about single mothers doing stuff like this. You see single mothers households where children are running wild and destroying the place. But you never see this in a single father household. If this is true, then why are we giving automatic custody to the mother and not the father? If this is truly about what is best for the children, the father should receive automatic custody and not the mother. They say that women give life. This is not true. Birds incubate the egg outside their bodies and women incubate the egg inside their bodies. But now, nah, for real, fuck them kids. Wait a minute, what the hell? You know, I had my first son at 17. God damn! Ain't no way I could do everything right. Nobody taught me how to be a parent. So when I first had my kids, I thought beating them was the answer. They, I was going to force them to respect me. I was going to force them to listen. Force was going to come, I was putting my hands on them. I was ready, I was coming with, I was putting my hands on. I got four sons. I was putting my hands on these folks, squaring up with these folks, ready to fight. Emotional damage. It wasn't until I beat my daughter so bad, I couldn't send her to school. It's easy for them to fix their face, fix their mouth, and try and tell you what you didn't do for them when they was little, or what they didn't get, or what what they did without, or how how terrible their childhood was. Whole time not even understanding what you sacrificed, you gave up, you did without, how you had to humble yourself, accept less than what you wanted, all because you had them. We do not care. They will try and drag you over the coals for the remainder of your life like you owe them something. At the end of the day, if I done got you to 18 years old, you done finished high school, I have done everything I need to do for you. Anything over than that is me being nice. Because when I sit back and I think about it, I think about the hours of labor I was in. I think about the months I carried you in my body and was uncomfortable. I think about the time I almost lost my life having you. I think about all the times I had to feed you and I couldn't eat. I think about the times I had to buy school clothes and had the same shoes for years. That's what I think about. I think about staying on a job I hated, but I didn't have a choice because I had kids to take care of, I had bills to pay. I think about the Christmases when I gave plenty of gifts and never received one. I think about the Mother's Days that I never got of anything. I think about the birthdays when I don't even get a call or a card, a 50 cent card from Dollar Tree. They say, fuck them kids. Family were toxic. My, okay. grandma, my grandma used to get drunk and wave her shotgun at us. Okay. Toxic. I had another aunt used to buy all my cousins freezes and candies, never bought me shit. Okay. Toxic. Used to let my other cousins play the game, never let me play the game. Toxic. Every black woman in my life that I've ever been in the care of has done me filthy. And I was a kid. And you just not realize that? I've been realized that. That's why I don't fuck with none of them. So who are you fucking But I stay loyal. Who am I fucking? Yeah, who are you fucking now? Black, black women, women, white women? Black, I've never had sex with a white woman in my life. I'm 28 years old. But that don't mean I can't tell black women about they self. Who the fuck is black women to think that we can't tell them about they self? When they got a problem with us, 
They let the world, they don't just let us know, they let the world know. They come up to your job, mm -hmm. try to humiliate you. But why we can't say, sweetheart, you need to be. I don't know if you guys have been following this whole mess with LaShawn Walker and her husband, Keith Walker. If y'all don't know who this is, this is the guy that is currently in the hospital. And his wife said that Tampa Bay Medical Center is keeping her, abandoning her from the hospital, right? So she's been saying this stuff, doing GoFundMes and all this stuff, right? Getting the sympathy of everybody. And this is something that everybody needs to leave in 2023. Need to leave stuff like this, that's going on in 2023. Clout, lying, trying to get the sympathy of everybody and stuff over lies. Here's another picture of them. You guys may have seen these on GoFundMes, on Facebook, all through TikTok and all this stuff. Of, of Keith sitting up here suffering and she's been banned not because the hospital is banning her from, from anything it's because she has been refusing treatment for him she has been neglecting it. she has been re refusing all the treatment the, the seizure meds uh, all that other stuff everything has been she is the cause of this so his parents stepped in his parents stepped in in order to save his life She's wanting it to leave. The parents are trying to save his life. That's why she's been banned from going into the hospital. I was trying to take this man out. I'll bring more later, but there are court documents and all that stuff regarding her no longer being allowed around him for his treatment or anything. His parents right now, John and um, the wife and all them, they currently are over his estate. They are currently getting him taken care of. The doctors don't know if it's too late for him, for Keith. They don't know if it's too late because of all the many times that she has refused medical treatment. She's making it seem like that, you know, the doctors in the hospital and all this stuff have failed. No, they've tried everything in their power to try to save this young man's life. She has been blocking it. She's been, she has been um, keeping him in this state right here and it's deteriorating day by day, yet she's still collecting money, yet she's still playing off of everybody's emotions and sympathy, yet she's sitting up here still lying about the whole thing. And we're gonna leave that in 2023, all these fake, um, trying to get into people's emotions and stuff to donate and to get sympathy votes and all this stuff, right? We're gonna stop that, but there are court documents regarding this whole situation. If you know what I'm talking about, you can go search it. Um, man, this is wild and it's really sad. You gotta be careful who you have in your circle. Be careful who you even marry because right now it's for the love of money, nothing else.